Hi, in today's video, we are going to look into feature selection process and different feature selection approaches. Let us start with feature selection process. Feature selection is also known as feature subset selection. So basically, it is a process of selecting subset of features from a given data set. Now, we perform feature selection for some reasons. Four important reasons to perform feature selection or feature subset selection are to have a simpler model. We would have lesser training time if we have less number of features. We can avoid something called as curse of dimensionality. We are also interested in overfitting of data. Feature selection process is third step process. First step is subset generation. Second step is subset evaluation. Third step is stopping criteria. And final step is result validation. Basically, if data input is given, if complete data set is given to the complete uh, to a model, it is treated as full feature set. Now, from this complete feature space, we create only narrow or lesser number of feature space, which we call as subset feature space. Now, this selected subset or feature is evaluated across the goodness of subset. Whether this given subset is giving a good type of input to a particular model or not. So, that goodness of model is goodness of subset is evaluated in subset evaluation. And after this, we have stopping criterion. That means feature subset selection. That means new generation of subset and its evaluation will keep on going unless and until we cannot identify a criteria where to stop. Now, as soon as our stopping criteria reach, we end our process of generation and evaluation of subset. But if the criteria is not yet fulfilled, we keep on generating new subsets and evaluate their goodness. Let us first discuss subset generation. Subset generation is a search procedure which is producing all possible candidate subsets. So if I have say 10 features, how many subsets I can create? We can perform multiple permutations and can generate different different candidate subsets. So using search procedure, we are performing, we are producing possible candidate subsets. And if we have n-dimensional data, that means two raised to n subsets can be generated. Uh, that means if I have 10 features, I can have 2 raised to 10 possible candidate sets. So, which is untraceable. Obviously, we cannot directly do and test each and every candidate subset. So, we must have some search strategy. So, search strategies will help us to generate only good candidate subset, not all possible candidate subset. Remember, for n features, all possible candidate subsets are 2 raised to n. We must reduce this search space. So, search strategies are here used are sequential forward selection, sequential backward elimination, bidirectional selection or elimination, and recursive elimination. In sequential forward selection, our search starts with an empty set. We keep adding one one feature from actual feature set to our subset and iterate. Way. In sequential backward elimination, our search starts with complete set. So, our subset is initially consisting of, say for example, all 10 features. And from back side, we will keep on eliminating one feature at a time and check its goodness. So, that is nothing but sequential backward elimination. Third is bidirectional selection or elimination. So, elimination or selection process is applied on both ends of feature and at the end we have recursive elimination. That means recursively we will check by eliminating one one feature at a time in our final feature set or by recursively we can add 
one feature in our feature subset selection process. Then we have subset evaluation. How to evaluate or how to identify the goodness of generated subset? We have multiple candidate subsets. Each subset is evaluated and compared with another candidate subset. This comparison is made with previous best performing subset. Basis of comparison is nothing but evaluation criteria. Now what is this evaluation criteria for a comparison of two different subsets performance? The criteria of evaluation is depending upon the input type and output type of a variable or a model. If input of a model is numeric and output of a model is also numeric, we have methods like Pearson's coefficient or Spearman's coefficient. If input is numerical and output expected is catamerical or vice versa, we can use techniques like ANOVA and Kendall's coefficient. If input is categorical and output is also expected to be categorical, we can use chi-square test and mutual information as a measure of performance model. So basically these evaluation criteria are nothing but different statistical method which are used to compare the performance of one subset with performance of previous or other subset. Then we will stop generating a new subset. Stopping criteria is a cycle of subset generation and evaluation can continue only up to predefined criteria. And this criteria defines the approach of selection process. Whether our selection process is of filtering, wrapper, hybrid or embedded. We will discuss shortly each details of each of these methods. Now for this particular point, let us understand what is stopping criteria can be or it can, how it can look like. We can stop on generating and evaluating a subset unless we find the, our search complete. That means up to or some goodness, percentage of goodness is being achieved. Some given bound is reached. That is, we have reached the number of equations. Say for example, we have defined we will perform this particular process only 10 times. So at 10 to time we have to stop and we have to select that subset which is giving or performing very well. We can end our search when we have subsequent addition or deletion producing better subset. Say for example currently my subset is having 5 features and adding one more feature to this subset will degrade its performance or having less good subset we can stop at that time. Also, for example, I have elimination method. I have seven sub features in my subset, and by eliminating eliminating any one feature will degrade goodness of that subset. So we can stop at that time. So subsequent addition or deletion cannot produce better subsequent result. At that condition, also we can stop our cycle. And fourth one is sufficiently good subset found. Last step of feature selection process is result validation. Selected best subset is validated either against its prior benchmark or by experimenting real life or using synthetic models with some authenticate data. We can use different performance parameters such as accuracy, cluster quality, etc. to finding out the effectiveness of given subset. Let us discuss different feature selection approaches. Different approach of feature selection can be filter approach, wrapper approach, hybrid approach or embedded approach. First is filter approach. In filter approach, a featured subset is selected based on statistic measure. We do not have any learning algorithm that is employed to find out the goodness of selected feature. We have set of features, we will apply statistical measures and we will see the goodness of feature. We can have values of each feature and according to the score of each and every feature, we create one subset. And this subset is later on given to learning algorithm and their performance is later measured. So basically we have set of all features, we select best subset using statistical measure. 
With the statistic, we will have values. What are the score of individual? Example of statistical measure is Pearson correlation matrix. Now, as you can see, this correlation matrix is giving the feature dependency. As you can see over the diagonal, we have value 1. That is nothing but feature 1 to feature 1 relationship, feature 2 to feature 2 correlation, feature 3 to feature 3 correlation and so on up to feature n to feature n. But it is very difficult to interpret these values. That's why we represent this numbers of Pearson correlation with something called as heat map. Now, as you can see, heat map is ranging from minus 1 to 1. Positive 1 is the highest correlation denoted by this dark maroon color. And the negative minus 1 correlation is given by this dark blue color. Okay, uh, now consider MPG is my output variable. If you guys are quite aware of uh, auto MP, MPG data. Okay, so we can either have first value as a output variable or last value as output variable. No difference in that. Okay, so moving to word. My this is my output variable and I will consider only this particular row. Okay. So, output variable is completely correlated with output variable in a positive way of course. So, I would have value 1. So, highest more correlated value. As you can see, these all values are blue. That means we are having lesser correlation with my MPG. So, one value which is more correlated with my data is, this is my point 42, which is nothing but my feature called as an acceleration. So, I can find more uh, the correlated data set. Likewise, we can use information gain. Uh, information gain value will give us the amount of information which is contributed by a particular feature in order to predict our output value. So, as you can see, these values are actually predicted in a form of bar. So, their value is nothing but their amount of contribution of information. So, age is contributing more than our petty information. Similarly, test information is giving more contribution as compared to skin information and so on. Likewise, we have something called a statistical measure of Fisher score and we have ANOVA test, we have chi square test. So, these are statistical measures can be used for generating subset or to find out the subset without incorporating any model to generate subset. Another method is wrapper approach. Now this wrapper approach is the best featured subset selection using something called as induction algorithm. Here we use one classification algorithm as our featured subset selection algorithm. And output of this classification algorithm is subset of feature which is very good enough. And later on this selected subset is given to actual algorithm as an input. So here, in order to generate a subset, we use one of the learning algorithm. So every time a uh, one set of subset is given to learning algorithm, and their uh, values are evaluated, their goodness is evaluated against all other different subsets. And uh, this learning algorithm will eventually find out the best candidate of subset. And later on, its performance is validated and it is given to actual learning algorithm. So here, induction algorithm is searching for a good feature subset and which evaluated and it also, it also evaluates the goodness by itself. So we do not need other performance parameters for evaluation. This learning model is trained every time. This learning model is our induction algorithm and it is trained every time for each possible candidate subset and every time it evaluates its performance. Here we try to use its subset feature and we train this model using that selected subset. So based on inference that we draw from previous model, we decide to add or remove feature in our subset. This kind of model, even though giving us very good subset, because it itself selecting, taking decision of adding or removing some features in our final subset. These kind of models are very expensive in terms of computation as compared to our filter approach. Because filter approach basically use statistics. 
while rapid approach uses induction algorithm as one of the learning algorithm to generate subset only. This approach is giving performance which is superior than filtered approach. Another approach is our hybrid approach which takes an advantage of both filter and wrapper. We know filter approach is less computationally expensive and wrapper approach is computationally expensive but gives a good subset result. So we try to combine the goodness of both. We only consider selecting the best subset part of filter approach and we replace generation of a subset by this selecting best subset. So basically it is taking advantage of filter and wrapper approach instead of generating a subset based upon some induction we here use statistical technique for selecting a best subset of features. So statistical tests are used to decide best subset of given cardinality and here also learning algorithm is used to select final subset among the best subset across the different cardinality. Here cardinality of a subset is nothing but number of features in a given subset. That means we say that learning algorithm is selecting the final subset among the best subsets across different cardinality. Last approach is embedded approach. Embedded approaches do not use induction algorithm but they use our final learning model as a process of selecting subset as well as evaluating its performance. So this iterative method takes care of each iteration of model training process by carefully extracting only those features which contribute more to the training of a particular iteration. This algorithm can carefully extract those features which contribute most to the training of a particular iteration. So here as you can see training is performed in iteration and in each iteration we have to generate a new possible subset of features which can give good amount of information to the model. So as you can see set of features are given to the system and they can generate the subset and given to learning algorithm plus their performance is evaluated and for second learning process again the new subset will be generated by algorithm itself. So we do not have an actual model and induction model in this case we have only one model which is responsible for training itself as well as selecting a candidate for itself for another training iteration. That is all for today. In today's video we have seen feature selection process and feature selection approaches. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing out.